All right, and we're back. Uh, not sure what's going on here. Just recording and frame rate is really not liking this terminal right now. So I had to restart the stream recording. Just sitting here waiting for the, uh, the terminal to come in. Tram. The detail, the environments in this game are just absolutely incredible. Like, look, you just walk up to this, you can see the detail that's put into this rivet. You know, the map. Like, the screen, the screen in the game has pixels. That you can see. You literally get close enough and it has pixels. Just the texture mapping that they use here shows just how this game is. Yep. Wow, there's three now. Okay. Ha, there's another player. He's obviously back to the AES. Or the, uh, let's see. IA. Yeah. I Expo. <laughs> Went and bought some merch. Once again, we're struggling. Hopefully, we're at 30k. Turn off the chat window there. And we're back because this is a live game. It doesn't matter if I freeze up. We should just be transporting along. So interesting that this door is not here. It doesn't feel like it's there. <laughs> it feels like it's not there either. And people just got out. Nearing next stop. So maybe it was. Maybe I am not where I'm supposed to be. Careful, doors are now closed. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and get out as fast Stand as possible. Clear just of in case. Yeah, I, yep. <laughs> All right, show is this way. The only thing I did look up outside of game was what planet this was going to be on. Uh, just because I wanted to make sure I didn't have to do a bunch of flying. Uh, even though I love it, and we get a bunch of free ships to fly, I really wanted to make sure I started as close to where I needed to be as possible. So this other new player is probably going to go ahead and buy some clothes. I think I will buy one too. Let's go ahead and get an Expo shirt. So we'll go ahead and confirm that. Got that shirt, and... Consolidated Outland. I'm actually a big fan of Origin. I love their just little look of their stuff. So we'll go ahead and buy one of those. We'll go ahead and bring up the menu and equip these clothes. Maybe. <laughs> things are updating. Now, I don't know, I've never had it this buggy. Go ahead and take that off. Uh, we've got, oh, interesting. boots, I guess. And we'll go ahead and save. And pull out of our movie glass. And we should be able to... Gosh, it's been a while since... <laughs> it's been a while since I've played this. I don't really remember the controls. Uh, gosh. To toggle view. Okay, 
Well, I guess we can't. I can't remember how to. This is a friendly reminder. Stay aware of yourself. I can't remember how to go out to third person view. We'll go ahead and call the elevator. Well, wow, alright, one was ready for us. So, oh, interesting. Let's go to there's two expo lobbies. So, I guess we'll go to this one. Oh, I believe that's an actual brand. So I wonder if each day they are also doing something different. Oh, that would be kind of disappointing. I mean, it'd be really cool in order to get people to come back every day. But that would have mean that I already missed a bunch of stuff. So I was kind of hoping to see everything. This is pretty neat. They've got some kind of a video going on here. The audio is a little choppy when we watch their ad. It looks kind of like you see the carpet fiber on there. So, oh, this is a racer. Yeah, so. As it says, it looks like a sports car ad. Yeah, I feel like that's not at all. Hey, Jeff Gordon flies this. They definitely shot that in some engine that has ray tracing. They had to, to get those lighting effects. I'm really hoping someday that they do bring ray tracing effects into this game. I think it will. It'll bring a lot. Uh, it's an already beautiful game. So let's go up to the IEE 2950 and take a look. So we're already starting to see some massive ships here. So uh, I believe I've made a video of that one. That is the basically Reliant Core in the middle. It's crazy because when I flew it and I had it in the hangar, there was really no point of comparison. But you can see just how massive that beast is compared to like these tiny little um, like racer aircraft. And then. Ooh, so an armament gallery, so we can take a look at some cannons and things that are, are being put on these. So vehicles today are so much more than transport. They're home away from homes, they're mobile businesses, they're vital parts of our everyday lives. Nothing helps a captain and crew feel more at ease than knowing that their ship's safety is being guarded by high-quality, expertly crafted weapon systems, of course. From focused defensive options to heavy-duty stopping power, the IAE armament gallery is bound to have the weapon upgrade you've been looking for. So can you purchase these things? Yeah, so not only it's a little, the hit, hit box is a little off, but yeah, you can come in here straight up, buy it. I mean, hey, you wouldn't be an expo if you could buy stuff. And then we've got different classes of laser weapons, I'm guessing is what these are. So these are cannons. We have like your class, that's your M4A, M3. So that's your <laughs> M3, 4. Guessing this is your five, your six, <laughs> your seven, your eight, right? Yep, M8A cannon. Attention, this is not even close to the biggest gun I've seen. The Remember, here for you know, some of these almost look like you could carry them by hand, but they are meant to be mounted on ships, just different sizes of ships. And, you know, you'd think that that big cannon is going to go on the big guy, right? And maybe, uh, you know, show in on those little... Uh, 
is right there. Some M8s, which is possible. It looks like there's even a lower floor, so let's go check that out. Oh, neat. They've even put, like, ramps and things or had them extended. These, these look like... Oh, gosh, I don't remember that actually being a ramp inside to get into originally. Oh, okay, I thought those were cryobays. I was like, that's that's too alien at that point. And then we jump down at the bottom. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't play around, kids. You've got the prospector. And then... Oh, looks like we have some components over there. That'll be kind of neat to go check out. So let's go over and check out the components. Let's see if we got like little light bots. That's funny. That's too cool. They're on the old, old wheels and everything too. So let's go over and check out components. I've already done a I've done a video, I can't remember if I've uploaded it or not, on this MISC Reliant Core. Uh, it's absolutely massive. Feels like walking around in the aliens uh, Nostromo. So it's really neat to see these components because you don't normally see these uh, like actually in uh, live models. Um, anytime I've bought one, I've bought it through a terminal and just installed it on my ship. I've never actually physically been able to look at it. So it's kind of interesting to see some of these. I mean, I don't, I'm not even sure what they are. Uh, so this is a shield generator. So let's see what one of these other guys is. Uh, one of these is probably a warp drive. Yep, so quantum drive. So these three are quantum drives, probably you know higher class quantum drives than some of the smaller ones built for smaller ships, uh, which would be more you know like this, which looks like an actual little generator. Um, so I'm not sure what is going on here. If this is me, or if there is something going on with the server, or just. Not sure. Uh, so, what's going on here? You did all the research. You did test flight after test flight. You found that the ship's just right for you. Now it's time to take things to the next level. By customizing your ship components, you can make a great ship even better. The items that display at this year's IAE Component Showcase will help you find the perfect balance between defense, offense, and function. And then what's over there? Some more, some more components. So yeah, there, there's supposed to be lots and lots and lots of components. And eventually we will see them uh, actually getting slotted in in ships. Uh, currently, they kind of just take effect. I don't know if there's any cosmetic changes other than actual cosmetic upgrades. Um, I know weapons, torpedoes, those kind of things. If you do attach them to a ship, you will see them uh, physically manifested on the ship itself. Same as with ammunition of torpedoes and missiles as you use them. So this guy looks like it has you know, a rack of five and four, so it's got nine missiles on the front, if those were to be used, they would literally become just spots. Um, as they launch out, they would be gone uh, until they get refilled. So we'll take a look and see what's downstairs. Um, probably, a, hopefully, a couple more ships, but I guess not. Um, there is a display. Display hall. So there's another exit here. Or that is where I am currently. So either I'm leaving the place, which I can't remember exactly how it came in. I thought I walked in on the main floor. Okay, so this is this is Misk. Oh yes. So this is a hologram, but oh, this is the ship I want. This is one of the whole series. These are going to be absolutely awesome when it comes to things. So this is, okay, so this is the hull A, the smallest and most affordable hull. The hull A is great for those just striking out the galaxy on their own. The hull A is most similar to the Aurora and Mustang, but lacks the jack-of-all-trades nature. Where others trade cargo capacity for firepower or speed, the hull A is 100% on mission transport. Yeah, so what's really interesting and nice about these, this hull series is it expands. So the hull A is a lot smaller than like the hull B, C, D, uh, and E classes, which are going to be a lot longer, but you have this front section, and then you have this, you know, attachment area in the middle, and then you have your engines in the back, and 
it is entirely built for transport. Now, you look at this thing and you're like, well, how is this thing going to land? It doesn't. Um, it is not meant for in-atmosphere flight. It is only meant for uh, like space station to space station, space to space, space trucking. Like this is the space truck. Uh, the Caterpillar is, was that kind of, but this is taking it to a whole other level because it's going to have modular components. So you'll be able to jettison those tankards, those containers, um, and straight up just go down to the front of the engine. And then even it pulls together um, so you can go in atmosphere. So eventually when you buy this, I mean, you're going to have to buy it from some planet um, and then put it in the dock and take it off. But until it does that, like it has to be built somewhere and take it off. And it will do that without having cargo containers. And you'll load them up on a space station. But I'm, I'm excited for that one. Uh, the whole C is the one that I was, I've been looking at the most. I feel like it's kind of the best balance without being too massive. Uh, really excited about that one. Can't wait for that one to come out. Uh, is this a different area? I believe it is. No, it was still the same room. No, this is a different one. Yeah, so this is... Okay. Uh, is this the whole C? This is the whole C. Awesome. So often called the most common ship in the galaxy, the whole C is the most produced of the range and is considered by many to be the most versatile intended to hit the sweet spot between the smaller single-person transports and the massive super raiders that make up the rest of the range. The whole C offers the expansive modularity of larger ships while still retaining a modicum of maneuverability and allowed the low end of the range. So yeah, this is, this is the guy I want here. This can be manned by a single person, but just look at all the storage and how it's arrayed out. This thing is gonna, this thing would be massive. Because that is the cockpit. That's the bridge. And you imagine there's living quarters or whatever in here, and maybe some extra storage, um, and then just giant. So this, this, this is not as long as it could be. This thing could have, you know, eight of these modules. So you'd have one, two, and then, you know, three, four, six, seven, eight. This thing could be just massively long. Um, also not sure if that's like open space or if there is some sort of a, a tunnel that can be used there. And massive engines in order to thrust this thing. But uh, this is supposed to be the most pirated ship universe uh when it's gonna be done <laughs> pirates will be looking for that guy right there hauling cargo and try to take him out so that could be interesting to be <laughs> on the other end of that to be on the receiving end of pirates uh and if they make trade working so people can actually make some money then people will hire fighter fighter escorts which will provide the economy part in the game um you know if you can hire three fighters to come along with you or an escort corvette or whatever the case may be uh, if you're going somewhere where there's no pirates on the route this is a friendly reminder stay aware of your surroundings it's smart to bring something along so that doesn't there's not a terrible lot of ships here okay so here we go uh, so they have MISC, and then we have the Reliant Core, Reliant Tana. So we are here. That's the Starfare. Okay, so that's supposed to be the Starfare Gemini, actually, the MISC in the middle. So there are more ships. We need to go look. The Reliant Core is actually on the right, and the Freelancer are actually on the left. So Apex Hall. Okay, now I see those exits. Let's take another look at that map real quick. Ah, uh, two frames per second. Okay, here we go. Uh, so these other two areas are... Off. Okay, so the whole A and whole C are on the lower level the hollow hollow suites. Yeah, let's go over... Let's go over here. Okay, so I guess I was wrong this whole time. That was actually the Starfare Gemini. Attention visitors to the intergalactic aerospace. I forgot that was the Reliant Core. I think the Reliant Core is more of a dropship. Um, the Starfare is meant as a refueler, as you can say, by the tanks on it. I 
feel dumb. I've been going to the wrong ship the whole time. It's been a while. It's been uh, a couple months since I played Star Citizen. Actually, I entirely missed uh, 310 and 311. So these plants aren't aren't fake. Like they're real, and then there's a sky backdrop. But these trees are dropped in here. Spare no expense. Like Jurassic Park. Spare no expense. Not gonna pay Richard Kiley to come in and do the voice acting though. Okay, so these are the Reliance series. So which one is the dropship? Because I know they make it. It looks like the Starfarer. Just in spawn. Adaptability. Defined as being able to adjust oneself readily to different conditions. An invaluable asset in a constantly changing universe. From the Koray to the Sand, yeah, the Mongo, and the Jazz. This is, yeah, this is one of the Reliant versions. This features advanced sheet designs. The Reliant Very Sheet Very, you know, very straight up functional ship. Minimal cargo area. Uh, this thing goes into, uh, has a VTOL mode, so the sh engines are shifted down right now. But then it spins and rotates and the uh, wings go vertical. So, I'm not reading every single one of these. This one more looks like the fighter version, or larger, the larger cannons. And it's got the green paint, so this feels like more of like the military, military version. This one has crew quarters, so instead of being, now the first one must have been like more of a cargo version of the Reliant. Uh, this seems to be more military focused. Uh, even though it's got a couple beds in it. It could also be an explorer uh, because it does have the uh, accommodations in there for personnel that it could be an explorer version. Although the green paint kind of leads me to think that it's military. Uh, let's see, yellow, I don't see any weapons on this, at least on the outer side. Uh, on the right side, so just waiting. What is with these drops? I, I feel... Uh, so it's got like a refueler arm on the front of it. This is a camera? No way can this be... This Yeah, this has to be an observer. This can't be like a filmmaker. <laughs> that would be crazy. So the Mako. Yeah, I feel like this would be Explorer. It's got kind of the same, same crew accommodations, but that little that refueler arm in the beginning, on the front of it, and the camera, right, which should be operated by this person here. So it does have a few weapons, uh, a couple under the wing. But the camera, this like camera apparatus and microphone and everything, that's kind of interesting. The Mako version. Uh, so another one with a camera apparatus on the ring. So that would be, I guess it would become the top. We've got some kind of caution here. If that's some kind of other sensor array. Looks like the cameras and stuff as well. Couple hit in there. So this is the Reliant Sen. This is a research ship. I mean, obviously, <laughs> if you walk right in, you see a microscope, crew quarters, bathroom. It's pretty similar here. So this one is your researcher. The yellow one, the Mako, is probably an explorer type ship. Uh, green, I'm guessing, is the military one. Just from the cannons, crew quarters, and then the blue one is the cargo version. So, let's go ahead and go over the other side. 
side, we'll take a look at the Freelancer series. Quite large. I was wondering how they were going to do this as... I mean, you can, as a game, you can create as big a space as you need. You don't have to literally rent any space. Um, also curious how they think they got this in here. You know, unless the roof of this comes off in a way. Can't really tell. Uh, <laughs> you know, they didn't build this guy in here. It is a giant, giant room, but it's a room. I mean, it's, I guess it's possible that if this was a, if this was a demonstration of these ships, um, then they just lived here forever. You could just build them here, but realistically, this is an exhibit hall. Right? It's Apex Hall. This is hosted somewhere, so you'd have to be able to get these ships in and out. Now they do have of these kind of like white areas above them which could be doors so now we have the freelancer area here you have the military version of the freelancer which is the dir i believe that's the miss so the freelancer miss uh that's the military spec this is the max i own one of these just absolutely awesome for hauling cargo fits a ton in there extra wide uh, center section double engines on either side uh, this one must be the dir and then you have the freelancer uh, just the regular version i can't remember the skew of it but this is i believe the dir yeah i've never seen this one outside of a hollow map uh, so this one is supposed to be a torpedo or missile launcher system here so it's not really military in the sense uh, but it is more weaponized uh, interesting these giant generators or something here a little bit of a cargo area and then the crew quarters and it, seats a crew, or it fits a crew of four uh, in the front it's actually quite it feels a little longer than the other ones my max and the regular freelancer you go from this and then you're in the cargo bay instantly so this one does have an extended length uh, as opposed to the other freelancers but it's curious an extended section yeah as you can see this one just a giant cargo bay as much open space in there as possible. Just like the freelancer standard. I was just go yeah, I was wondering why I didn't know the skew of it, because there is none, so it's just the misc freelancer. Got the tiny little bay here in the back. Cargo. Same front stuff. That's the other one. Okay, so let's head from here. Let's go over to the other company that is showing stuff off. I really want to see the capital ship. That's what I am most interested in. I see a little hollow uh, projection of the whole A and C, which was kind of neat, but I want more. I want to see the big stuff. Starfare, that's cool. I've seen that. I've flown that. It's just massive. That thing, you could have somebody running around in that ship, and you would you would never run into each other. <laughs> bigger cannons. Yeah, look at that. That guy. He's giant. That is 3D mapped. Just, <laughs> you 
you know, like, you just, it's, it, it's the little things. Because in any other game, you would look at a door that's just there, it's like, oh, that's just a place where you're you know, like, it's not actually there. see it, it, it's there, it's there on purpose. They really try to make it fit uh, and everything have a reason for being. I'd almost be interested to see the logs and see where, you know, how many people use like the end elevators rather than the middle ones. Is there like eight elevators? And I believe I'm going out the one that I came in. On. So. Okay, so remember, you know, I guess the uh, kind of design outline of these halls, this is just a generic uh, exhibition hall. Look at that carpet. It's really neat. I guess I should probably finish my soda. Or Take it back up. I was gonna take it through the way, but it disappeared. Somebody came and cleaned it up. How nice of them keeping their expo place nice and clean. Wow, okay, so this has a lot more ships. The other one was just kind of focused on that one in the middle. Um, so what I see here, I see a caterpillar. Oh man, 